I kind of miss wandering around West Hollywood. Everything is expensive and it's too loud and there are too many people, but it is a, um... It is a happening place. I do, I do like the sheer audacity of how, uh, of how, uh, gay everything is. Like, it, even the billboards. I don't know if it's still up, but for years and years and years, the large billboard that you saw when entering West Hollywood from the west side, from the west direction, uh, it was a gigantic billboard of a man wearing, very muscular man, wearing nothing but a towel, and the towel was an American flag, and it was, uh, it was a, a, an AIDS testing clinic advertisement. Like, do you think you might have AIDS? Get tested. But it presented that information in a more catchy way, I think, than that. Oh, I remember that? Yeah, oh, you do? You, you've been? Yeah. <clears throat> that might still be there. Of course, the advances we've made with regards to HIV in the past, um, in the past while have been stellar. West Hollywood, the gayest place in the USA? I don't know if it's the gayest place. It's, it's, it's pretty gay. I mean, it's, it's definitely, like, up there? I don't know if it's the gayest place. I can only kill these guys with the fucking damage of my javelins hitting them. Like, my blunt fucking... Javelins thwacking them. <clears throat> it's 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 in the top ten gayest places. Please, no lightning immune. Okay, nice, easy kill when no lightning immune. Flawless skull, and we're done. <clears throat> Very nice. It's cool how being HIV positive isn't a death sentence anymore. Yeah, as, with as long as you can afford the uh the the medication for it, I feel like it doesn't affect you that much at all, really. Do you think all the all the bug chaser gays are going to get mad now that it's like not really as much of a thing, you know? Like to them it's like a little AIDS abortion, right? Like you're taking the magic of of HIV away by neutralizing it, you know? Uh, Bioterrorist molding, yeah. Um Fuck the bug chasers. The, the fear-mongering of, like, gay people deliberately spreading AIDS, well, it's certainly a thing that has happened. It's not, like, a... <clears throat> it's not, uh... I, I don't think it happens super, super often. Um... What's a bug chaser? A bug chaser is a euphemistic term for... Well, usually it's in reference to a gay person uh, who is sexually aroused by the idea of having and spreading HIV. Uh, so, so basically what happened, this is the context, okay. Basically, uh, if there are any people in chat who want to disagree with me on this, just follow through, okay. So basically, for, for hundreds, thousands of years, gay people have been being gay. Uh, spectacular, okay. Then the 1980s happened, and, uh, they all died of AIDS. Seriously, like, like so many gay people died of AIDS. Like, so many. It's really difficult for me to even describe. Like, like it was it was like the Grim Reaper just cut with a scythe through the entire... Like, like just... Seriously, like, just an unimaginable pall of death upon the gay community. And, um... And that was bad. And, uh, unfortunately, trauma breaks people's brains sometimes. And I think some of the some of the people in that environment uh were because because aids was being described as like a spiritual plague from god against gays that was essentially the position held by the reagan administration the president of the united states while not explicitly had essentially thrown his weight behind the political block saying uh yeah this yeah it's god punishing you uh, didn't even talk about AIDS for months and months after the crisis began. Many people died just because they didn't care. Anyway, uh, you know, sad stories aside, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, I think that in light of all of that, there were gay people who tried to make the most of it, you know, because they're all getting AIDS. Their friends are getting AIDS. Everyone's getting AIDS. They're trying to make the most of it. So they think, okay, well, what if this isn't so bad? What if this is something special that's special to us? Like, it kills us, but it's special to us, you know? There are things that kill other people that are special to them. Women have died in childbirth plenty historically, but that's still considered to be a special, almost spiritually relevant thing to them, you know? So maybe it'll be powerful to us. Maybe there's some special taboo in 
specifically looking for and adopting the thing that is like considered the 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 physical punishment for our degeneracy as gay people our perceived degeneracy so you have the you have a, a mixture of like yeah yeah a, like a rite of passage element as well like well now we're the real gays because we've got so you've got got a whole bunch of stuff and mix all that in with people's brains being broken by trauma and congratulations you've got bug chasers now they were largely overreported on because you know the fucking hets were like freaking out over that right like y you know like there could be a story on the news of like this one gay person deliberately spread aids and then you know the reagan administration's oh the gay people are deliberately killing themselves there so it, it was it's it's it was definitely an overstated thing i don't think it's super common um but at least nowadays most bug chasers and i want to be clear by the way okay uh and i and i mean this with with no ill offense uh, intended uh, you are degenerate. Uh, uh, you're degenerate. Scat fetishists are degenerate. Uh, all of you are degenerate. Uh, but you have a legal right to do what you want. How, as long as the other people uh, are, consent to it. And I think in, in modern kink circles, bug chasing is something people are explicit about. Like, I, to my knowledge, in the bug chasing community, which is, again, not very large, they are ruthlessly exclusionary and condemnatory towards people who non-consensually spread any kind of disease. There's a big difference. Look, I don't like scat fetishes, okay? But if you and another person who wants to get pooped on meet up and poop on each other, okay, whatever. But if you go find a person who doesn't want to get pooped on and then shit on their chest, that now we've got a whole other we've, we've got a whole other dealio here. I'm just saying, uh, the, the consent matters even with this, and I think it's very strange, and I don't respect it, uh, except for that I, I, uh, I, I respect it in the abstract, you can do what you want sense. Anyway, um, the legacy lives on. I'm pretty sure that, uh, on, on Grinder, for example, you can literally set, uh, 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 your profile to say that you're um you're positive and it's something you can look for like like uh pause yeah pause like hiv positive uh you'll look for it no that's not necessarily bug chasing that could just be disclosing that you have the illness but after all if you've got hiv you might want to look for other people with hiv because then there's no issue between the two of you you're not i mean easy as that right of course nowadays if you're taking prep uh, as a person without HIV, the odds of you getting HIV are... I don't have the full reju. She does have big tits. Um, what killed you, Lamau? It's his corpse explosion. It, it, it like does 90% of your health in a hit. Um, is there anything legal, legally wrong or legally... Or is there anything illegal about lying and giving someone HIV? Yes. Um, here, hold on. Wikipedia prep. Uh, that's, that's the case for any sexually transmitted infection. Uh, hold on. Um, prep has been shown to be highly effective, reducing the risk of acquiring HIV up to 99%. Uh, let me see. Side effects, uh, generally self and well tolerated for most individuals. Let's see. It's just a pill you take. What's up? Yes, oh yes, also, if you have HIV, there's a way of reducing your viral load to, to an undetectable level, as, as in you have essentially no chance. I think it that thing, prep. the thing that reduces your viral load, also prep. that's also PrEP? Yeah, you can take it... Or are they two separate things? Or, or And, as somebody with HIV, prevents Okay, yeah, I've heard that it reduces it to a point where the odds of getting HIV... Basically. Like, like nothing yeah you might as you well can. yeah but but we're talking about very marginal yeah um yes hold on is hiv treatable for the average person uh it'll probably strain you okay here we go so prep is good but here's another thing okay people with hiv should take medicine to treat hiv as soon as possible hiv medicine is called anti-retroviral therapy or art what a nice name. If taken as prescribed, HIV medicine reduces the amount of HIV in the body, the viral load, to a very low level, which keeps the immune system working and prevents illness. This is called viral suppression. 
defined as having less than 200 copies of HIV per milliliter of blood. HIV medicine can even make the viral load so low that a test can't detect it. This is called an undetectable viral load. Pigeon, can I help you? She's just in the bathtub. Just she, I just go in there, she screams. She's just sitting in the bathtub. There's nothing, there's no one. Why? Are you saying you want a bath? You hate baths. Yep, yep. Ah, it still hurts, even with your claws trimmed. Yep. Okay, yeah, here. So guys, this is on the CDC.gov. Right here, okay? Risk of HIV transmission with undetectable viral load by transmission category. So if you have HIV and you've taken HIV medicine to the point where it's undetectable, look at this. Transmission category, sex, oral, anal, or vaginal. Effectively no risk. It is so effective that it it, it essentially, it's it, yeah, it's it's essentially zero. Uh, now, if you're, uh, 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 if you have a womb and you're giving birth, 1% or less and passing HIV to the child. Still a, a concern, but... Uh, sharing syringes or other drug injection equipment. Unknown, but likely reduced risk. Breastfeeding substantially reduces, but does not eliminate risk. So it looks like it, birth and breastfeeding are still risky. Uh, uh, but in terms of sex, which is the only thing I'm doing, uh, effectively no risk. So that's nice. Get on your medication, people. Oh yeah, we've kicked HIV's ass these past few decades. People, the, the thing that, like, is really fucking stupid is that the medical immunization, sorry, I shouldn't say immunization, the, the, the medical, uh, cuckening of HIV has been so remarkable and it's gotten very little mainstream attention because people still think of it as a fucking gay disease. Like, like, we, we, we conquered, like, there was a literal fucking pandemic that killed hundreds of thousands and we've conquered it essentially we've 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 almost negated it and uh and it really has not gotten anywhere near the fanfare that uh that it that it that it ought to i think yeah yes for first world patients yes many people still die of hiv in developing countries i'm, I'm talking about here yeah. it's so sad to think of all those people before yeah they didn't know what the fuck was going on man that shit aids untreated kills you fucking quick okay and it spreads real easy uh, like, like, pre-melted butter. It, it just, you, you've got your communities in San Francisco or whatever, and all these gays, and they're doing, oh, they're doing lots of butt stuff. They're just, oh my god, all over the place. And, um, and they're, and they're doing it, and they're doing it the exact same way they always have. Lots of butt, lots of stuff. Uh, and then they all just start fucking dying. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's bizarre. Um, yeah. HIV becomes AIDS and AIDS doesn't kill you getting a cold does. Yeah, yeah, well, right, the, yeah, the, 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 the purpose of it is, not the purpose, the effect of it is to, uh, destroy your, uh, immune system so that just about anything, uh, uh can kill you. It was so heavily stigmatized that Princess Diana touching a person infected without gloves made national headlines. Yeah, this is one of the... Th base things Princess Diana did. She shook hands with a, um, with a, a person known to be infected with AIDS without wearing gloves. Now, of course, now we know that you will never, ever, ever get HIV from touching a person's hand without gloves, but there was a ton of fear-mongering at the time, like, oh, if they go in a pool, everyone in the pool has AIDS. If they use the restroom, then the toilet seat will carry AIDS for one million years. Like, th that was like the, the line of thinking. Where did HIV and AIDS come from? Uh, I think it came from somebody eating monkey meat in Africa or some shit, right? It, it's, it's derivative of some monkey. Like, like, there's like a type of monkey where like half of them have AIDS, I think. Like, but to them, AIDS is like... a cold. You know? All, all, all pandemics are like that, you know? Uh, same with COVID-19, uh, uh, same with, um, cholera, uh, uh, the, the Black Death, all of, all of these, like, plagues, things that lead to pandemics, they're diseases that are common and more harmless than other animals, but are lethal to us, you know? Is that real or just an urban legend? What part of the thing that I just said? It's more widely, uh, believed that it came from Plamine. Oh, well, I don't know the specifics of, of, a of HIV's origin. Um... 
Yeah, I, I think I heard it came from monkeys, but whatever. Anyway, that's just how these things uh, tend to happen, you know? Um, CGP Grey had good videos on this. I don't know if they're, like, entirely rigorously accurate, but from what I've heard, they get the gist down, which is that uh, the reason why, you know, we had all these plagues over in Europe that we brought over to uh, the New World, and the New World didn't give us a bunch of plagues, is because we had disgusting cities full of goat shit, uh, and diseases that are fairly conventional to them are lethal to us, so they just hop on over, you know? Right, the Ameripox things. Because, you know, diseases don't want to kill us, you know? That's the last thing they want. We are home to a virus. Any virus, any disease that, um, that by its nature kills its hosts is not one which will have a home for very long. They want to spread, but you can't spread for very long if you kill everyone you spread to, so... Usually, diseases that rack a species are diseases that are... Well, they can kill you sometimes, but usually they're survivable. Uh, they don't... They're also not so viral that they burn through the population, because that would decrease long-term sustainability uh, for the virus, you know, for its ongoing existence. Holy shit! They're so fast and lightning immune. Um, so when we do get killed real easy by a disease, it's usually because that disease doesn't think that it's in a human. It thinks it's in some other animal that has a different immune system that is more designed to handle the type of behavior the disease engages in. All right, which one, which one? Which one, which one, which one? Bottom right, or right, uh, yeah, bottom right. No, yes, I know the virus doesn't literally want. I mean, like, is designed to. Is the the, the 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 virus has evolved in a way to bring about this sort of behavior because it maximizes advantageous outcomes. I mean, in fill in the blanks. I mean, I know that you know that I know. Wow, this area sucks. Holy shit, there are fifteen trillion fucking. No, fuck you. That's too many snakes. That's too- that's too many. That was like- that was so many of them. That was way too many of them. That was way too many snakes. Those- those enemies are incredibly damaging. Those- they're incredibly dangerous.